All right. Welcome to the Expert Speaker Podcast. We have none other than the man himself, the living legend, live from Austin, Texas, Harrison Coley. Welcome. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. What's up, the Book of Faces? Um, yeah, thank you all for, for being here. I'm super excited to get things going with the one and only Mr. Majid Like Magic. Let's get right into it. Getting cold DMs to turn into high ticket coaching clients. You've performed this magic for me. You've performed it for other people, generating millions in sales. And we're going to get all the questions answered for the people who want the clients from the Instagrams. Last time I saw you, Harrison, we were in Marrakesh, Morocco. Yes, we were. Or actually, we were probably in the Sahara Desert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the Sahara the last time I saw you. Waving goodbye in the sand dunes, wearing your turban. Uh, okay, so let's get right into it. It was last summer. You were traveling through Canada, stopped in at Ottawa, Canada, stayed at my place, and you told me about how you made a million dollars for... Can I name drop? Do you want me to, can I mention yeah, your client? I, that, I think that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So fine. Gerard Adams, Instagram famous public figure coach, 500,000 followers on Instagram at the time. Is that correct? Or was it like a million? Yeah, I think it's about 500K. And you had this campaign where you were DMing his followers to set up high ticket sales appointments yes. for a closer who was offering a $5,000 program, or was it a $5,000 event? Was it just the event? Yeah, we, there, there, there was a whole value ladder in association with it. But the essence is, I'm sure people in your audience have heard of appointment setting. Um, and so it's just taking a conversation in the DMs of Instagram, whether it's someone who commented on a post, someone who liked a post, someone who's followed you, or even just some random stranger, and having a conversation in the DMs, following a certain framework, and then leading to book a call or go through a VSL funnel, right? So we're getting people onto a sales page or we're getting people onto a live call. And from there, obviously, we can go ahead and convert into a high ticket sale. Let me break that down one more time. So there's a message sent to anybody who has liked or commented or is a follower. Yes. And this message leads them to a call. Yeah. There's a conversation, right? So it's not just, hey, book a call right now. That's the first message. There's actually a conversation that happens. And I'm really interested to get into this. What's the conversation happening in the DMs? Yes. And then they're booking a call. And then they're talking to a sales guy. They don't call him a sales call. You would you would refer to him, talk to our client success specialist, or what do you call this person? Yeah, I, I heard this language the other day from a client, and I just really love this language. And that's a salesperson is a trusted advisor, right? Or a client success rep. And this is someone who the responsibility of a salesperson is not to make money. It's to help the person on the other end of the conversation make the best possible decision for them. And that's something I've heard from Majid and something that I've really instilled is it, you know, sometimes the best thing you can say is this isn't a good fit for you on that phone call. So it isn't necessarily sales. It's more a trusted advisor or an enrollment conversation or client success conversation. Okay. So for my company, the Expert Speaker Institute, if we're sending DMs, we want to invite people to have a conversation with one of our speaker success specialists or okay. speaker advisors or speaker growth consultants. Yes. Okay. My clients are speakers. Okay. So we're Instagram messaging. We're going back and forth. We're going to talk about what goes on in these DMs. Then they get onto a sales call. They book a call with the guy. He says the price is 5,000 bucks. And remind me again, what was being sold? There's a, there was an event in Mexico. Yeah. So we had a few different things. There's one-on-one -on -one super high ticket coaching. There's a mastermind and an event in, in Mexico and in Cancun. Um, so we had a few different offerings going on, uh, very similar to if you want to work with the Expert Speaker Institute, you can work with Majid and his team over a year long duration, or you can do hyper intensives uh, and very similar type value ladder. We're just trying to get people into that funnel. So you were able to make, give me some numbers, how much revenue and how much time using this strategy? 
Yeah, we, we've had some pretty incredible case studies. Um, this was a, the case study you're talking about, Gerard Adams, was over a year ago now. So I don't have the exact, like, I'm going to butcher these numbers. Um, but roughly, I believe it was within 60 days, so within two months, we send something, it was about 100 DMs a day. Uh, so that'd be about 6,000 DMs. And so in 6,000 DMs, I think we had about a 2% conversion rate from DM to booking a call. Um, so 2% on 6,000 would be 120 calls. And out of those 120 calls, we had like a 60% show up rate. So I'm trying to do this math here in real time. Call that 70, call that 70 yeah. shows up. We'll, we'll call it about 70 people showing up. And the guy who was doing the sales calls at the time, his name was Mike. Mike was an absolute hitter. He had like an 80% close rate and our lowest ticket offer was 5K. Um, so you guys can do that math, 80% close rate on 70 calls at 5,000 or above. Uh, we, are not, we are not struggling to eat is the best way to say it. Um, Majid, it might also be good to, to share your experience with booking calls. Uh, that we did with completely cold traffic last year as well. Sure, sure, sure. So just to um, go over those numbers one more time, Gerard Adams, big following, DM campaign, 6,000 DMs, 120 set appointments, 70 showed up appointments, 80% close rate, call it 50-ish new clients at a minimum of 5K. So you're at a minimum of 250K revenue, 50 new clients. And all that happened in what? One month, two months, three months, two months, two months. Okay. That's amazing. Yeah. But Harrison, I don't have 500,000 Instagram followers. I said to you. Exactly. Yes. So you said, okay, well, and at the time I, I think I had 2000 Instagram followers. And to be honest, I wasn't really doing much on Instagram. I just had an account. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I was, you know, a Facebook grandpa. Like I was, I started in Facebook and I'll die on Facebook. I'm living in Facebook land. And you're like, Instagram DMs, what are that? In fact, just to be as, as, as green as I was with Instagram DMs, I didn't even know. I wasn't, DM, I wasn't messaging anybody on Instagram. I wasn't DMing. I wasn't messaging. I wasn't texting, whatever the kids are calling it these days on Instagram. I wasn't doing it. So I didn't even know there was this like hidden folder and request folder and spam folder and this whole like, thing to think about when it comes to the the, the dms in fact I, I used instagram so infrequently that whenever i would load it like once every two weeks i would see i have like all these people mentioned you in their story but then it disappeared because yes. i'm not on instagram so i didn't see it when they mentioned it so i'm like what are these things people mentioning me in the story and it's disappearing and i think anyway that's awesome so all this to say i was not an instagram pro and you told me, you said, let's go with cold traffic. And I said, my ideal client is a functional medicine practitioner. They've got Instagram presence. They've got followers on Instagram. They're putting out videos. They're wanting to get on speaking tours and speaking engagements. And they're wanting to make more money, get more clients. And they would like some public speaking coaching and some support with messaging. So what are we going to DM these people? And you said, you know, leave it with me started looking at my stuff, read my book, went through my coaching program, understood my offering, understood my ideal client, and built a DM script. First message, second message, third message. And so, so what we did was we would first identify a person. I think you've got this software that can send 100 messages targeted. Tell me about this software and how does that work? Yeah, so... I've been working with a close friend of mine for about over a year now. His name is Brandon, absolute legend. And he's created this software called Say Howdy. Uh, Say Howdy allows me to go to anybody's Instagram account, go to any post on Instagram, and I can collect anybody that's liked or commented or is following the account. And then I can send 100 messages a day autonomously. So I write one message. It puts their name into each post. So it customizes each message to that person. I can set it to send a follow-up message three days later or seven days later, and then I just press play. And then throughout the day, I'm just doing my work on my computer. And in the background, it's just sending DMs all day long, every single day. And so it takes me about 20 minutes to set up, uh, saves me about eight to 10 hours worth of work and gives me a hundred new prospects every single day, which is just- Why a hundred, not 200? Because uh, if you do more, it's, it's technically against Instagram's policy. So we don't want to, you know, we, we don't want to poke the bear. So 100 is like on that fine line of, of playing it safe. 
Is there a hard number on the policy? Uh, no, it's just like uh, you don't want to get flagged for using autonomous softwares. You don't want to get flagged for spam. You don't want to. There's certain like uh, best practices, right? If you're okay. brand new, you do less. If your account's 10 years old and you post every day, you can do more. Um, but oh, so interesting. we want to make sure we're adjusting based on where you're at on the account. Okay, so you got a robot sending 100 messages a day staying under the radar of the robot detectors at Instagram who might shut down your account. And how is it that you target, if I say, Harrison, I want you to message 100 functional medicine doctors a day. Yes. Can you target them? You, you mentioned that you can target the people who like and follow an account. Yep. And so two things that I want to highlight here. Uh, number one is the robot detectors and getting your account shut down. Instagram doesn't shut you down. They just slap you on the wrist. And so they're like, hey, that's naughty behavior. Um, and so like maybe you can't post for a day. Uh, I've never seen anything more serious than uh, like a 24-hour uh, activity limit where you just can't message more people. How many um, times have you seen that flag raised? Uh, Using this type of software for 17 or 18 months now, I've seen it three or four times. Okay. Most on brand new accounts or an account that hasn't been used in a very long time. So nine out of 10 times, you're totally fine. Very safe. Okay. So if your account is well yeah. used. If you're active, well, you're good. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah. I'm still waiting to know how do you target yes. the ideal and prospects? Targeting, I want to actually spend a, a moment on because I think targeting is an underrated and extremely important topic, especially when we're looking at social media monetization. Uh, the first few things to understand with social media monetization is there's 3 billion active monthly users on social media. No matter what you sell, no matter who you sell to, your audience is on some platform or another on social media. Like they're on Facebook, they're on LinkedIn, they're on Instagram, they're somewhere. So it's not if they're there, it's where are they? And that's the most important question to ask is not, oh, are they on social? Yes, they are on social media. We just have to find them. And so, well, we need to find the watering hole. We need to find the watering hole for your ideal clients, right? And so different people are going to engage with different things, right? Like naturopathic doctors and functional medicine practitioners are not going to be following uh, college party accounts. They're not going to be engaging with large pharmaceutical companies. They're not going to be engaging with corporate tech advice, right? And so we want to first understand who are you selling to and who is that ideal demographic and what kind of things do they engage with, right? Functional medicine practitioners are going to engage with functional medicine information. They're going to engage with influencers that speak on functional medicine and on holistic health and wellness and fitness and biohacking. So we can go to that industry, these watering holes, and we can say, okay, let's go find the biggest guy in the biohacking space. And let's engage with his audience. Let's target his audience because his audience has a high degree of probability of being my audience as well. And so this and you is- you say they engage with this audience and they also engage with this other audience? So this is where it gets kind of complicated. If you're manually doing this, yes. And this is where it's something where if you don't personally have a large following and you want to target your ideal client, it's like, okay, I'm going to see if- this person follows these two accounts and then I'll do manual outreach. And that's when you get higher targeting. Um, but just as a, as a rule of thumb, no, like you just target a single account or a single type of post. Um, and this is also, if you target just the followers of an account, it's generally more broad than targeting engagement on a post and engagement on a post is generally more broad than comments on a post. Right. And so it's like, I can just send messages to anybody that follows Majid I oh, can I got send you. to people that engaged with Majid's post. I got you. Or I can send messages to the people that commented on that post. And so we can get super granular with how targeted we want to be on the messaging and who we want to DM. Love uh, this. So just to reiterate, there's followers, there's engagers, and there's commenters. And the most, most engaged are the commenters. Second most engaged are the engagers. The third most engaged are the followers. And those are kind of the three different ways that people identify themselves associated to those accounts. They're either following it, commenting it, or engaging with it. As you were talking, I was thinking, okay, there's a guy called Mark Hyman. He's got a podcast. He's like every functional medicine practitioner's favorite guy. Everyone loves him and want to be on his podcast. He's like Mr. Functional Medicine. So if you're following Mike Hy Mark Hyman, that's probably a good sign. If you're following the Functional Medicine Institute of Training, 
that's the school that you got your certification from. Also a good filter. So let's say you're following Mark Hyman and you're following this thing. Now here's where my mind, mind got a little crafty. You're also following Rolex. I just got back from Dubai. Everyone's got Rolexes on. Everybody's got Rolexes on. Gee, and, and, you know, so people who love Rolex, they love money. Yes. And they have money. Um, and also, for some reason, I don't know why, American Express. Yes. Visa, MasterCard, Discover, they're all the poor man's card. Yep. If you got money, you got Amex. I remember once I was on a, I was on a call. I made a $50,000 pitch on a, on a sales call. And she only had one question for me. And it was, do, do you take Amex? <laughs> I said, oh, I love you people with money in your Amex is great. Let's do this. That's uh, amazing. So, That's so, awesome. so we're targeting people. We're seeing where they're following, where they're engaging, where they're commenting. We're DMing them 100 a day with our DM software. Now, let the games begin. Yeah. Let's say you DM someone. You go in, you comment on something. So it's a prospect. You go in, you like the last three posts. Boom, boom, boom. Maybe not even the top three. Maybe you kind of like three randomly. Because I now, now that I'm an Instagram user, I know that when I open up my Instagram and I say, oh, three people comment. One person commented on three different things. I can see them really filling that engagement on, I think it's the heart menu. And then the comment that says, hey, you're a functional medicine practitioner. Or we're doing a, so what we were doing that was really effective, Harrison, is we said, hey, we're, we're hosting a summit and we want to interview you, check your DMs. Yes. And we were getting response like crazy. We're we hosting a summit. We, honor, we want to interview you. So that for me is a good qualifier yeah. uh, of like, you know, if you want to be interviewed on a summit, you're probably an ideal client for me. Yes. It did not indicate buying intent. So I didn't have like a very high conversion. Like you were saying 80% selling on the, the campaign you were doing. Uh, we did, I think, something like 60 appointments for my summit. Yes. And five sales. In the first 30 days. If yeah. I remember correctly. So we're going to start running a campaign again. Yep. And your thought now is skip the summit, go straight to DMs and appointments. Talk to me about that. Yeah. So thought process is um, there's a few things and there's a few advantages of a social DM funnel than any other funnel. Uh, it's the simplest to set up. It's the least complex, right? We don't need to build a big funnel page. We don't need to build a VSL page. We're not running to a webinar. We're pretty much creating a conversation and then sending them a calendar link, which is like so ridiculously low effort to set up and activate. It's not even funny. And you're also able to actually target the people you want to target. Um, now, Majid, in your specific case, right, in, in your instance and situation, you have social proof, you have results, you have credibility, and you have reputation in the industry. And so for us to go to these people in your industry and say, hey, I'm open to working with you, I'm taking new people on as clients, uh, if, you, if you're interested in learning how to book speaking engagements as a functional medicine practitioner, go ahead and apply to work with the Expert Institute here. And then we have social proof, we have reputation, they can see Dr. Hyman and all these different accounts follow you. And so obviously, you're not just some random person on Instagram that's just messaging them, you have results, you have case studies, you have got proof of what you're doing. So they're going to stalk your account. They're going to be like, who's this Majid guy? What kind of posts does he make? What kind of content does he do? Oh, this guy's legit. This guy's an expert. He obviously knows what he's doing. And so now they're thinking to themselves, well, I can actually learn something from Majid. Majid actually has receipts for his work, right? It's not just a rented Lamborghini. He has the title, right? Majid has the proof of concept. He has evidence that what he does works. And so now they're going to go through that application. Now they're going to say, yeah, I'll, I just want to work with you. We don't need to give them a bunch of upfront value because they've already been nurtured just by seeing your social media, just by seeing who you're following, who follows you and what kind of content you produce. Now, the difference is, is let's say like last year, you're not on Instagram. Nobody knows who you are. Nobody cares about you. You don't have any content that explains what you do. You have no case studies. You have no social proof. So you have no reputation, no social proof. No, like there's no evidence that you actually know what you're doing. You have no receipts. At that point, we need to create value, right? We need to start by actually giving something instead of asking for something. And so if you're just starting out on social media, like let's say you just opened up a LinkedIn account, 
or an Instagram account. At that point, you want to be giving away free resources. You want to offer opportunities for people to speak at a summit or speak with an opportunity, right? You have to provide value. And that's how you're going to build those case studies. That's how you're going to build that reputation. And from there, then you can take all those case studies and say, hey, I'm actually exclusive. I know what I'm doing. I know that what I does, what I do works. Now you actually have to like apply and sign up and pay for what I do. Uh, but that's that's kind of the difference in why we flipped from going from a, a free summit to build that reputation, build that credibility. Now we have that social proof. We have this amazing library of content. And so now we just take all that content, that social proof, and we say, hey, Expert Speaker Institute is pretty exclusive, uh, but we'd be honored to work with you and we'd love to work with you. So go ahead and apply here. And if it's a good fit for both of us, we'll do some business. Great. So in other words, from who the heck is this guy DMing me to showing up on the call, there's a journey that they're going through. And part of it is the DM script. And I want to dive into that a little bit more. And part of it is the experience they get from seeing my social assets. Yes. The videos, the posts, who am I following? Who's following me? How many followers? If they make it over to their web, if my website, or if they start watching some videos, it's building proof. So this should all be aligned to support the ideal client in solving their problem, learning what they need to take the next step, getting to know me, getting to build trust before they get on a call with me. See, one thing, so working with you, Harrison, broke a belief that I used to have. Hmm. I used to believe internet strangers aren't going to buy from me. <laughs> Because the only clients I had ever had before were either referrals or people who saw me speak somewhere yes. and then booked a call with me. Pretty sure maybe one or two or three from a podcast or someone read my book and called me, but most of them came from speaking, which is why my whole marketing strategy was get more speeches, get more appointments from speeches. Those are the kind of people that get on the call and they're like, I saw you speak. I like your work. Maybe I watched your podcast afterwards. Maybe I downloaded your book afterwards. And they're like pre-sold before the call. Yes. Whereas my nightmare is like, okay, these random internet strangers are going to get on the call and they're going to be like, I have no idea who you are or, or where am I? I, I don't even I know. Don't, why am I on this call with you? I'm how scared. Did book, how did I book this appointment? Where are, why is my computer talking to me? I've had those calls, <laughs> you know? Okay. They're terrifying. I give you that. Those are not fun calls to be on. So for the people who are watching this and, um, yeah, so it's a it's a huge unlock to work with you, Harrison, because it it it's a new stream of clients. Yes, and it's very numbers driven. We're going to send hundred DMs a day. We're going to see what percentage of those become appointments. We're going to see what percentage of those appointments show up. And I think what's really great what we're doing now and what we did on our last campaign is the application is robust. Yes, I use the word robust because. Not only does it give us a lot of information, it gives some very interesting information to me. So one is I see an application well filled out. I'm like, this person's taking it seriously. If I see an application where it's like, it looks like a person's just trying to click through, that's a concern. Yes. So uh, also I'm assuming a lot of people get to the application and they go, ah, you know what, Never mind. Great, don't waste my time. So I'm, I think, What's really important for me is that I feel like I'm talking to the right people that I can ideally turn into clients. And if not, at least they're the right people that I can help and yes. we're not wasting each other's time. So I like this game of like, let's figure out how to make the funnel more effective and more simple. And um, let's talk about the DMs. Okay. Because I, I don't know how to get from... Who the heck are you DMing me to booking a calendar? It reminds yeah. me of the days that I was swiping on the dating apps thinking, okay, I've got a match. What do I need to text to turn this into a date? I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't, am I supposed to be funny? And can I just ask for the phone number? Do I ask for a, a date or are they going to think I'm a creep? Like, how do I get from we're talking on this text thing? We don't know each other to going on a date. Yes. And so please tell me, what have you learned from being in the DMs on so many accounts and, and running so many campaigns? Absolutely. Um, 
So there's a few things in the DMs, and actually this applies to dating apps as well. And the first thing is, is and it's going to, the exact language is going to differ for everybody. So I'll try to just offer some principles and some underlying core pillars that should apply to everybody, regardless of how you communicate in your communication style. Uh, the number one thing, if you just sent a cold DM, or if you're just messaging some random person on a dating app, is you need to disarm them, right? Because in today's world, we're not starting from a place of neutrality. It isn't, oh, this random guy just messaged me. I wonder what I'm going to think about him. We naturally assume the worst of people, especially on a cold message, right? It's like, I don't know this guy. Why is he messaging me? Why are you knocking on my door? I don't know you. What are you trying to sell me? Like, oh, who's this person messaging me on this app? Like, what's going on? Um, and so we actually are starting with negative momentum, right? Like the immediate judgment is not neutral, it's negative. And so we need to override or counteract, disarm that negativity before we can do anything, right? It's like if someone knocked on your door and the first words out of their mouth is buy my thing, you'd slam the door in their face because you're like, no, like it's not even neutral. You, do, you don't even care what they're selling. You're not interested. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to build some relationship. We need to build some rapport and show them, hey, I'm not evil. I'm not here to attack you. I'm not here to take advantage of you. I'm not dangerous, right? So we disarm ourselves and we disarm them. Easiest way to do that is showing, hey, I have no negative intent. I'm not threatening. I'm not a threatening presence. I'm not here to do, I mean no harm, right? I have no ill will. And so as soon as we disarm the person we're engaging with, whether it's a DM or a direct message or whatever it is, a cold call, a door knocking, a date on a Tinder app or whatever it is, we have to disarm. Uh, once we have at least neutrality in the relationship, then we can establish expertise and create curiosity, right? And so it's really three things. It's disarm, establish expertise, and create curiosity. What I Amazing. mean by this, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'd love to know tactically, like what disarms. Personally, I love a good GIF. If I could text someone a GIF, they're smiling. In fact, I just set up an email autoresponder where the first thing people get instantly when they email me is a cat going like this on a keyboard because I just love gifts so much. So that for me, it's so disarming. I wonder what you recommend is like, what's the first message that, how do you disarm in the opening messages? I mean, transparency, authenticity, and humor are the three main elements, right? It's like, if you immediately say like, hey, like this is a, this is a cold DM and this is why, or you start out with a joke about it, like, if you acknowledge the situation and it's like, uh, if someone were to knock on your door and the first thing they said is, I know you probably hate me for knocking on your door, but at least it's kind of funny, right? They've acknowledged the situation. They've acknowledged <laughs> the issue, right? And so the yeah. first thing is just acknowledge what's going on, right? It's like, if you try to dance around it or pretend that discomfort isn't there, it's only going to get worse. Um, now, Majid, your communication style is humor. So for you, absolutely poke fun at the problem, make jokes, right? If you're in a more serious or academic industry, you might not be able to send a gif of a cat slamming on a computer, but you are still able to acknowledge and bring light to the, the discomfort or that's the skeleton in the closet per se. Yeah. I'm thinking how I would start a DM. I would yeah. say, I think acknowledging what th this is a cold DM. But if you read it, it will be worth your while. Or this is a cold DM, but I sent it to you for a reason because my assistant, I identified you as someone we can help. Yes. Mm, let's see. I don't know. Are they getting it that far? Are they going to get it that far? I would say put an emoji early on because your eyes, you got your eyes. You want to see the emoji. You want to get to the end. And so I sent you a screenshot of one that was like really funny in the first sentence. I was like, I love this so much. I, you know, I, so anyway. The one I sent this for a reason, like uh, this is an automatic message, but I sent it for a reason. That's yeah. a great message, right? For three different reasons. You disarm them and you acknowledge the issue and you're also creating curiosity. They want to read the rest of the message and you sending it for a reason means you have some foundation to make a reason off of, yeah. right? You have some level of experience to say this is worthwhile because ABC, right? So you're doing all three core principles in one. You're disarming, creating, uh, establishing expertise and creating curiosity all in that statement, this is an automatic message or a cold message, but I sent it for a reason, dot, 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 and then the rest of the message. Mm. But that, that's an exceptional message. Like, I just want to highlight that. And then I would go straight to value proposition one sentence and, and avoid a multi-paragraph first message. Yeah. Actually, yeah. in fact, I would send that first sentence and then I would send this next sentence as a second message and send the next sentence as a second message. That looks a lot... 
better than a three paragraph first opening uh, DM, a cold DM that's in the spam folder that has three paragraphs is getting a scan and a delete. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, uh, worst, the worst possible thing you could do is write an essay to someone who doesn't know you, right? Like talk about entitlement, like, oh, I'm going to take a minute of your time to, or two minutes of your time to read this thing. And you don't even know who I am. Like, yeah. get out of here. Like you haven't even earned my respect. Why are you yeah. trying to ask for that much of my time? Um, so definitely avoid writing the book. So I think if I'm DMing my prospect, and I know we have a script written and it's it's on a tab somewhere, but I'm just off the top of my head, I would say we're looking for experts who are available for speaking engagements on the health, uh, or we're looking for health and wellness experts that are available for paid speaking engagements. Send. Would it be okay if I sent you paid speaking opportunities that I think would be a good fit for you? Question mark, send. That's a pretty specific question, but I'm, I'm looking for them to, I'm looking for them to respond to something. Cause I would say phase one of DM engagement is get response. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you cannot solve someone's problem unless they're even listening. Right. So it's like, number one, you have to get them to respond to you. Number two, you have to find out exactly what they need and make sure that you can meet their needs. And number three is provide value and actually offer a solution. That's okay. Now, now you're doing that with your team in the DMs with a DM expert in the Philippines. English is not her first language, but she's working on a script. Yes. And so tell me how you're getting that to happen. Because what I love about the process is you got 100 DMs going out a day from a software. Then you have a live assistant who's working significant number of hours in the DMs with all these people. And what was really cool about seeing this happen in my account is it's my account. It's happening on my phone. I could see that I'm having all these DM conversations. Not even I'm I'm not there, but I'm watching them happen. <clears throat> and then some of them are popping up on my calendar. One day I had 13 appointments booked on my calendar in yeah. one day. I opened up my calendar and I saw the back to back to back to back to pack to pack to pack to pack full week of appointments. It was great. I could just wake up in the morning and talk to people who want to talk to me all day. Yes. Fantastic. So what should people know about the DM? Obviously, there's some people listening to this. They're thinking, maybe I'm going to do it myself. Some people, they're thinking, maybe I'm going to hire someone and train them. Some people are thinking, maybe I better talk to Harrison so I can get him and his DM team putting appointments in my calendar. Right. So I do want to clarify one thing. Um, last year when I was working with Majid, I was doing everything for everybody. Um, this year, uh, Majid and I are going to start working together again. And what I recommend is I, I'm helping people build their own team for a few different reasons. And the number one thing is ownership matters, right? And so if you feel responsible to generate sales in your own business, you're going to actually take the action versus when you hire someone to make the scary salesy thing go away, you don't actually take any action, just creates more problems for everybody. Um, so I, I just want to highlight that. Uh, another huge thing around all of the same, same kind of deal is uh, depending on where you are in your business, you might be better off hiring a US-based sales rep that costs more money, right? That is more expensive, but has more experience as a native English speaker uh, versus other situations. You don't, you know, you're bootstrapping, you don't have a lot of momentum and you want to make the most out of every dollar you can, like hire in the Philippines, hire a VA, right? There's people that have these skill sets that can still help you, even if they don't live down the street from you. Now, if you're making six figures a month, you already have good momentum. Absolutely hire the best sales reps you can. Obviously, you're going to see a higher, higher ROI really depends on your situation. Um, Majid, you asked, what should people do when they're thinking about this type of thing? I'm going to go back to the very first thing I said, and just say that I, your clients are on social media, whether on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, they're on social media, no matter who you are, no matter what you sell, you can do business and you can monetize your social media. And if you aren't monetizing your social media, someone is selling the same thing as you are, on social media. So someone else is beating you to it. Someone else is taking your potential clients because you're not there to sell to them. And the probability is you sell a better service. And so you have an obligation, right? It's like, I can provide more value for less money than my competition. But since I'm too lazy or I feel too superior to be on social media selling this, 
your clients, your ideal clients are getting a worse product for more money from someone that isn't you. So I, I would say, hey, they're on social media. It doesn't matter if you build this yourself. If it doesn't matter if you go get someone else to build it for you, or if you just hire someone to do it, it doesn't matter. Just do it, right? The action is the most important thing. Uh, and then it's just how much expertise do you want to invest in, right? You do it yourself. It's going to take your time. You're not going to be super good at it, but that's okay because you're still doing the thing. Uh, but the, the underlying message is just do it. Monetize your social media because if you aren't, someone else is. Okay, so the mindset here is that someone somewhere is selling a service like yours on social media. Therefore, it would behoove you to believe that your service could also be sold on social media. Yes. And you can take these actions yourself, which are identify your potential target, find accounts that they're following, that they're commenting on, that they're engaging with, maybe invest in some sort of automated software that sends 100 DMs a day, maybe get in the DMs yourself with transparency and humor and getting them to respond and getting them to tell you about their problem and getting them to book an appointment with you. It's possible. You can hire a team to do it. You can do it yourself. Yes. Foundationally for this to work, you have to believe that it's possible. Yes. In fact, I was giving advice to an entrepreneur recently early uh, healer building out her healing business. And I advised her to make a post um, that I thought would convert into a few thousand dollars in sales. And her response immediately was, those kind of people don't, aren't following me on Instagram. Like the kind of people that would buy based on the offer that I just mentioned. And I was like, so that was her belief that prevented her from even making a post. So that belief ain't making anybody any money. Like... <laughs> Like all, like anybody who would buy from me, anyone who buy from me is not on Instagram or they're not following me. So you have to believe yes. that your buyers are on social media. You have to believe. And, and if anything, if, if people take away one thing from this conversation and the big unlock for me, the big aha for me, it was like, strangers from the internet will pay me money. Yes. <laughs> strangers from the internet will book a, book a call with me. Strangers for the internet will show up on that call and pay me on that call thousands of dollars. Yes. I did not have evidence to prove that that could work for me. I'm aware that it was happening for other people. So that was cool. Thanks for that. Yes. And that's, you know, you got to start with understanding that it is possible and these people are there and then you have to build the evidence in your own life. Right. And so it's first understand, Hey, I can do this because other people are doing this. And if Majid can do it, I can do it too. And as soon as you understand that since Majid can do it, you can do it too. Now you just have to go get that evidence in your own life and in your own business. Um, but it is possible. So just go get started. Just send the DM, uh, book a call with me or whatever you want to do and make it happen. Get out there. Who would you like to be speaking to now, Harrison, in terms of people you like to work with and helping them with their business? What's a good person to reach out to you? And what's the people you, you don't, you're not ready to help now? Yeah, I don't love working with brick and mortars. And I say that with love for brick and mortars. And I love you guys. Uh, clients that I see the most success with and clients that I can add the most value to are middle to high six figure and seven figure online businesses, service based businesses. So we're looking at coaches, we're looking at info products, uh, even like the e commerce guys. So if you're an online service based business doing at least 300,000 a year, I can probably help you out in adding a bunch of revenue to your business. There you have it. How to get clients from cold Instagram DMs. Secrets revealed. Step by micro step. Thank you, Harrison Coley. Thank you, guys. It's been an honor to be here. What's the best way for people to reach you, Harrison? Uh, best way to get a hold of me is follow me on Instagram, the Harrison Coley. That's all it is. So the T H E Harrison H A R R I S O N. Coley, C-O-L-E-Y. No spaces, no underscores, none of that. The Harrison Coley on Instagram. Go ahead and give me a follow. Send me a DM. I'd love to connect. There you have it. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Expert Speaker Podcast. 
Thank you for listening to the Expert Speaker Podcast. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and leave us a rating so that more people can discover the Expert Speaker Podcast and so more people can be empowered to share their message. Be sure to go to www.expertspeaker.com and take a masterclass to learn how to grow your business and make money speaking. It's totally free and will change your business. If you're ready to work with Expert Speaker, you can apply. Just go to expertspeaker.com slash apply and someone from our team will be in touch with you to help you grow your business with public speaking. That's expertspeaker.com slash apply. We'll see you in the next episode.